What's up, everyone? Mark Lobliner, CEO, MTS Nutrition, Chief Marketing Officer, TigerFitness.com. Let's talk about the Tampa Pro. So I decided to do Tampa Pro. I called off doing the Chicago Pro because, well, I had cancer on my chest. It was carcinoma, wasn't the melanoma, wasn't a huge deal. So I had to get it removed. So I got that removed and I'm good to go. And it healed faster than I ever imagined possible. And so... After that was removed, I started training pretty hard, went back, did some boxing, and I wanted to drop some weight to feel better. Um, I was at around 220 pounds, and I just don't like being that heavy. Um, I, I didn't get up to that by being lazy or anything. It's just where my body naturally went. I was a bit more free, went to a lot of dinners and stuff, and, you know, I travel a lot for a living, and... You know, so I ended up getting down to like 213, and then I'm like, you know what? I might do the Tampa. I might not. I talked to my coach, Jose Raymond. He's like, bro, let's do it. You're in, and I'm all set and ready to go. I believe it is August 4th. Now, the reason I decided to do it as well is I'm guest posing at the Knox Classic on August 5th. So I'm only going to compete on Friday. The 212s compete on Friday. Fly Saturday morning into Knoxville and compete not compete, guest pose at the Knox Classic. And I plan on bringing down the house, so please show up to Tampa, uh, come show some love. I compete on Friday. And also, if you can, I want you to come to the Knox Classic. My guest posing will be fun, free bars for everybody. You know how I do it. <clears throat> but I wanted to just, for a moment, tell you guys why I'm competing and why this means so much to me. Um, why I do it, because... I'm gonna put up a couple comments here. Number one's from whatever it is, Mr. Royd Hammer or whatever. Basically, my back sucks. I have no business competing and I should pull out of the show. Now, here's the deal. I was told, and I didn't save all the messages many times for many years, that I would never become an IFBB pro and here I am. So for me to listen to a pundit online about what is and isn't possible, um, no, I'm not pulling out of the show. I'm a pro. I earned the right to compete in the pro ranks. And I know my place. I know the chances of me winning a pro show my first time or even any time at 41 years old going up against guys. I believe Keon, who's I'm a huge fan of Keon. Like the guy has an amazing physique, a top competitor. Dude, I don't have any illusions of grandeur and I'm not planning on doing anything. But competing for me as a pro is something that I worked very hard to be allowed to do. To stand on a professional bodybuilding stage next to people who do this for a living. A lot of these guys who compete as pros, now in amateurs, you got a mixture of people who own businesses, people who own companies, you got people who are servers and mechanics and plumbers. And I've met so many amazing people competing as an amateur. And as pros, a lot of these people are literally professional bodybuilders. They make money. They wake up every morning thinking, how can I become a better bodybuilder? On the grand scheme of importance in my life, bodybuilding is a distant 10th, if that. Um, I train before work like 99% of you watching this video. Um, I never spend over 60 minutes in the gym. I do cardio with my kids usually, or I take my dogs on walks. Uh, I'm definitely not living the gym life. I pack my meals like every responsible budget adhering to adult should do. But also for me, this is something that I want to do. It's a bucket list thing. And my goal is, well, I'm going to win. I would not do a show if I did not think I had at least a 0.0005% chance of winning. I'm training to win as much as I can. I'll explain that in a second. But I'm also, you know, training to prove something that I belong on that stage and I, I want to look like I belong. And I know standing next to people like Keon, that's very hard to do. Because Keon makes people at the Olympia look like they don't belong on a stage. And I believe he's doing the Tampa. If I'm incorrect, let me know. Which is humbling. This guy is amazing. Like, these guys are so good at what they do. For me, let me be honest here. Something I haven't said anywhere. I've alluded to the fact that I'm very blessed and things have gone well. Um, one of my companies that I own alongside some partners had a... A very, very, very um, 
insanely awesome partnership with a very large omni-channel corporation, which means that there's a lot of work on my plate right now. We're aiming to take it to the next level. And this is something that, um, to be 100% honest with you guys, because I don't lie, you know, I'm not Bill Gates or anything, but I feel very comfortable that my kids will never have to worry in their life now. This is something that I've been working towards for years, years, years and years for, I'm 41 years old and, and I've been working and it all happened last Monday. And, and I've been putting in alongside my partners hours and hours and hours of work to make sure that this deal comes to fruition. And it did. And now we have so much work to get to that next level. Tiger Fitness is growing. Our 3PL, third party logistics company is exploding. If you guys know anybody who has a, a, a product that they need to be fulfilled from multiple warehouses and shipped same day, um, inventoried and everything, we do that as well through Vorlo Fulfillment. You know, the Outright Bar, more and more locations. We just got into Dunham Sports, a sporting goods store, um, and continue to go our relationship with HEB and Hy-V. Uh, Tiger Fitness continues to dominate in the, um, in the internet space. You know, um, Ambrosia, insane. The growth level of Ambrosia is unlike anything I've ever seen before. Pump chasers, a lot of new things come in there. Um, and there's other businesses going on. I have a legacy at Carbon, which is our youth performance facility that we just opened here. So my day is literally get up at 4 a.m., get as much work done as possible, and then I'll get my workout in probably around like 7. I get to the gym at like 7. 9 a.m. we have our first session. I get on my computer between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. to get some work caught up. Unless I have a conference call, those are usually between 10 and 4. I have conference calls Monday through Thursday with my new partner's company, my new partnership company. Um, 11 a.m. we train a whole a, a lacrosse team. Then we start our session. We have I work all day, and then I start 5, 6, and 7. We have sessions at Legacy. My day is packed. For me, bodybuilding is 4 to 5 days a week between 7 a.m., I'm sorry, between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. alongside cardio. Uh, my, my life has never been busier. I've never, and my daughter starts her junior year of soccer, which she's being recruited very heavily right now. Uh, my son is wrestling. Both my sons are wrestling. Preston plays his first football season. Um, I just got certified to be a USSF soccer referee, so I'll be doing that on Sundays, hopefully. Um, my life is full of love and joy. And I'm trying to get, convince my wife to let me adopt, let to adopt another child. I really just feel, I feel like I can give more. I feel like I can give more, but bodybuilding for me is it's, it's, it's something I do. It's something I love. And I really, 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 really enjoy when people think I can't do something because I've spent my entire life proving people wrong and I have no intention of stopping that habit. Mr. Royd Hammer, whatever your name is, I appreciate you watching my stuff, I really do. And as long as you don't say anything negative or nasty, you could talk shit about my physique all you want because I have a mirror. And trust me, I'm harder on my physique than anybody. I know where I stand. I'm a 41 year old guy. Um, the skin on my abs are, it can be a little weird at times because I've had multiple abdominal surgeries because I had a diastasis tear. I understand that. I understand my triceps aren't the best. I understand everything. I see what you see. I understand my calves are undersized. I understand I don't have the best legs. But I will guarantee you this. I will be every bit of 212 pounds on that stage. I will fill out my frame. And I'll be the most conditioned motherfucker on that stage. Because I can't control. I will never have muscle bellies like Keon. I will never have muscle bellies like Phil. I will never have muscle bellies like probably my neighbor down the road. The one thing that I can control is what I eat and how conditioned I come in. And that's what I control. And... Again, I'm not here. I don't need the money. Like, this is my fucking backyard. I'm good, bro. Like, I'm good. I'm not filthy rich by any means. But I've worked my, my whole life. I've worked very hard. And I'm at the point now where I could just liquidate and hang out. My kids will be set. Everything's good. Everything I do is out of love. 
and everything I do is out of goal setting and becoming a better person and perhaps, you know, potentially, you know, maybe motivating someone else not to compete in bodybuilding. That's stupid. Bodybuilding shows are kind of dumb. You ever think about that? Like you're getting judged. I, I, I get it. I, bodybuilding shows are dumb. Okay, fine. It's my outlet. I love it. But if you don't love it, I get it. I understand. But maybe I convince someone who's morbidly obese that if I can do it with my schedule, they can do it with their schedule. Maybe somebody's working two jobs trying to get by and maybe they, they can't pay their bills because gas is like $10 a gallon and everything's crazy. Food prices are through the roof. And maybe they see the fact that I started out really low and I worked my way up. I'm self-made and I'm still working every day to get better, to give back. That's why I do this. Look, man, like Keon, these, I don't, I'm not, I don't know what anybody does for, I don't, I don't, Keon could have a, he could be a, a seven figure a year executive. I'm not, I just keep pointing him out because I'm the biggest Keon fan. I love his physique. I truly do. I think he has one of the prettiest physiques in the history of the sport, even though he hasn't really, I think he has so much room to grow in many ways. But a lot of these guys, like bodybuilding is their way to move up. Right. And I love that. I want to show that I can compete, stand alongside, shoulder to shoulder with these individuals, these fucking studs. And I want to show that I belong on that stage. I want to show that I can do everything I do and still bring something nasty. Look, I proved a lot of people wrong. My beautiful dog. How can I not have a girl? Like my dog He's about to take a shit. Look. On December 11th, when I earned my pro card, a lot of people... A lot of people did not expect that. A lot of people were almost upset that I did it, right? But I did it because I put my mind to it and I kept working towards it. And I never let anything get to me. I use the hate as fuel. And the comments, if they're really nasty, I delete them just because I don't like negativity. I surround myself with positive people. Y'all know who Mike Rashid is? Mike Rashid, I love that guy. And he has taught me to remove negativity from my life and to just bring in the positive and surround myself with people who help me level up. That's why I surround myself with Sean Torbati, with Mike Rashid, with C.T. Fletcher, with my, my partner Chad Vordenashi, my wife. You know, it's all about leveling up. So I'm humbled and honored and I'm nervous. I'm nervous as fuck, guys. I'm so nervous to get on stage next to professional bodybuilders. Don't think for a second that I'm not scared. I'm scared as fuck. I'm scared. I'm scared of looking stupid. I'm scared of, I'm scared of just, I'm scared of looking like I don't belong. I'm scared of being that old guy where everybody's like, what the fuck is he doing on that stage? Why is this part-timer on this stage? So I'm going to fight every single minute of every single day to make sure that I'm not the guy who looks out of place. And how do I do that? by coming in condition. And you know what? If there's one thing I know, it's conditioning. I know that God didn't bless me with the best genetics. I know that I don't have the best situation to bring my best package. But I also know that I believe in myself. And I believe in everybody who, who's watching this, that look, there are some things that are inconceivable and potentially impossible. But if you work hard enough and put your mind to something, it's amazing what you can do so follow your dreams, guys. Don't let the haters get in your way. And just remember, it's your fucking world. Everybody else is just paying rent living in it. And to all the people who don't think I'm going to win, the Tampa, get in line. Because I'm one of them. I didn't think I was going to win Masters USA until they called my name. I called my wife. My wife told the story. We were, having a, we were actually at a friend's house today. And... My wife got a text from me saying, I'm not going to win today, but I looked my best ever. And then I won. So if there's anybody who doubts themselves, it's me. You have to realize like manic depression is human. Like everybody's like, do you believe in manic depression? Yeah, I just don't believe it's unique. I believe we all have our moments of being manic and we all have our moments of being depressed. And I can't say that when I was growing up and, you know, I had hard times, I can't say that. I didn't have suicidal thoughts. I didn't think the world would be a better place without me, but I'm here. I didn't act on that because I knew that there's something better for me, something better for my family. And thank goodness that I snapped out of it because I'm here. 
and I get to coach kids every day, and I get to do this YouTube video that my views suck, but the 10 people who watch it, hopefully I inspire to be better people. And the other 10 people, I hope that I give them good ammo to feel better about themselves because they talk shit about me. It is what it is, guys. Listen, I'm not one for rah-rah speeches. I actually am. I do it every day at Legacy. I'll just tell you this. I'm the most blessed man in the world. I have a beautiful wife who I've been with since high school. I have amazing children. A 16-year-old daughter who's about to crush every state record in powerlifting again in the state of Tennessee. A son who's going to do the same at 14. A nine-year-old son playing his first season of football after wrestling and playing soccer. They're all getting good grades. Bro, there's nothing anyone can say to bring me down. I'm the most blessed man in the world. I have generational wealth. I have everything I need. All I want to do is give back. And I want to work with you guys. I want to be here. I don't have to do YouTube videos. You guys see my numbers, man. They're not very good. But I'm gonna keep doing them because it's just who I am. It's where I started and I refuse to stop. But I will see you at the Tampa Pro from my heart. I love everybody, okay? I will see you at the Tampa Pro. I hope you're there. And I also, um, do you guys remember a girl named Tracy? Tracy's the one who uh, was a victim of domestic abuse and almost died. And actually, she was in the hospital for a long time, rehab. She's in a wheelchair now. She's a paraplegic, doesn't have full use of her hands. She's doing archery. But Tracy Otto will be at my show. She'll be there. Um, she texted me the other day. I'm like, oh my God, I was just going to text you. I want you and your man to come to my show. She has a beautiful boyfriend, um, beautiful meaning that it's a beautiful, loving relationship and she's going to be there. And if I do win in the long shot, I do win something top five, every bit of money I get from this and refereeing youth soccer. Cause you do get paid like 50 bucks a game for that. I will be donating to the victims of domestic abuse because I've seen it firsthand. And I've seen children, I've seen women, and there's nothing more disturbing to me than domestic abuse because there's stories that I don't wanna get into that affected me on a very personal level. And every day I work to make sure that never happens to another person again. Appreciate you guys watching, please. Tampa, Knoxville, Tampa Pro, Knox Classic. Competing at the Tampa Pro, guest posing at the Knox Classic. I might not win, might not even place, but I guarantee you this, you're gonna see the best Mark Lobliner you've ever seen, and that's not a game. I used to have to go through dozens of bottles of vitamins, of supplements, just to get what I need. Look, I'm busy. I'm running multiple businesses. I'm coaching. I'm a professional bodybuilder getting ready for my first pro show. I don't have time to sit there and do all that. I gotta go. I'm on the go all the time. That is why I created MTS Nutrition Immortal. Here's how they look. This, all it takes, this replaces dozens of bottles of supplements. So let me tell you exactly what this has. It has probiotics, greens, liver detox, joint support, cardiovascular support, and the most complete multivitamin, multimineral supplement ever created. If you have a busy life or you simply want more time to do the things you love and be able to travel by just taking one simple little pack with you, Immortals for you.